In this video, we're going to see how we calculate the five number summary and z-scores. And I'm using the same data that I've used for all of the chapter three videos, which is found in the three one section. It's labeled measures of center. So first off, we'll do the five number summary. The five number summary is comprised of the minimum of the data set, our first quartile or Q1, the median, third quartile, which is Q3, and then the max. So we have our data ordered, sorted from smallest to largest. We can see right away the minimum is two, the maximum is 70, and then we already technically know the median. We calculated it above, but if we wanted to find it, we could just do equals median, parenthesis, highlight your data, close parenthesis, enter. So we see that the median is 23.5, and we don't have a 23.5 on our data set. And that's a good clue that this is an even numbered of data set. I think we've got 30 data points. And so when there's an even number of data points, to find the median, you have to average the two middle data points. So what Excel did is it realized that 22 and 25 are the two middle data points, and it averaged them to get the median of 23.5. And so what I like to do is I like to color code everything that is smaller than the median in one color and everything that's larger than the median in another, and that's going to help me when I go to calculate Q1 and Q3. So to find Q1, what you do is you hit equals median, and then find the median of just the top half of the data, or the numbers that are smaller than the median. It's a little bit funny that the way we have our numbers ordered, the top half is actually the smaller numbers, and then the bottom part are the bigger numbers, but Q1 is the median of all of the numbers that are less than the median itself. So I'm going to do equals median and highlight what I have colored in blue to see that the middle value in our top half is 4, and it gives that little green triangle there because it thinks you made a mistake and didn't highlight the correct data, but we did. Excel tries to be helpful, and sometimes it's not helpful at all. And then to find Q3, we do the same process on the big half of the numbers. We do equals median, parenthesis, highlight all of the numbers greater than the median, which I have colored in orange, and then enter. And so this is our five number summary. The minimum, first quartile, median, third quartile, and X. And the other thing we need to find in this video are Z scores. So we'll do a Z score for each point. And the way we find our Z score is we do equals parenthesis, and then let's cell reference that data point. So I'm gonna click on my cell A2, minus, and then the Z score formula is your point minus the mean over the standard deviation. So my mean is 24.76667. I'm gonna click on that value and then hit F4 on my keyboard to put the dollar signs in front of the cell and the row and column reference, which means I'm locking in the cell. I'm gonna drag down to find all of my z-scores at once, and I don't want it to change the cell reference for the median. So again, I clicked on my median cell, and then I hit the F4 button on my keyboard to lock it in. So it's equals parenthesis, your point minus your median, or minus your mean, close parenthesis, divided by, and then click on your standard deviation, and let's just pretend that's a population standard deviation, and then again, hit F4. All right, we said in the last video, we technically don't know if this is a sample or population. We'll just pretend it's a population for the purpose of finding these z-scores. So we have our z-score formula, and hit enter, and it tells us that our first point is negative 1.19 standard deviations below the mean. And then the beauty of using cell references is if I go and click on that formula and hover over the bottom right-hand corner until I get the plus sign, I can either click and drag down on the plus sign or double click on the plus sign, and it'll find all of my z-scores for me. And so we say that anything between negative 2 and 2 is typical. It's not significant. It's what we would usually expect to see. But anything with a z-score that's below negative 2 or above 2 is unusual. It's significant. It's an outlier. And so the only one for us that is outside of below negative 2 or above positive 2 is the z-score for 70. Our point 70 has a z-score of 2.36747. So that tells us it is unusually large, it is an outlier, and it's way above the mean for this data set. All right, let's do the same thing for student agents. We'll start off by finding our five number summary with the minimum, the Q1, the median, Q3, and the max. So our data is ordered. We see that our minimum is 20, our maximum is 65. 
We can find our median by doing equals median, parenthesis, highlight all your data, close parenthesis, enter. So a median of 21.5 tells us, it's not in our data set, that we have two points sharing the middle. So the smaller half of the numbers goes from 20 to 21. And then the larger part of the numbers goes from 22 to 65. And again, I always color code my two halves because it helps me to find Q1 and Q3. Then to find Q1, we do equals median and highlight the smaller half of the numbers, which I've got in blue. Close parenthesis, enter. And then to find the Q3, we do equals median, open parenthesis, and then highlight the bigger half of the numbers. Close parenthesis, enter. So we have our five number summary. And it's really interesting that our minimum and our Q1 are the same value. That tells us we have a ton of data points down there at the smallest number, which makes sense because that was the mode of our data set. And then we've got the median. And so the median tells us that half of our data points lie between 20 and 21.5. So half of them are in the 20 to 21 range. And then our Q3 tells us that a quarter of the data points fall between the median and Q3. And then Q3 to the max tells us a quarter of the data points fall in there. And since that max is way bigger, if we were to visualize this as a box plot, that top whisker would be way longer than the rest of the graph showing us that there is an outlier. Right? And then to find our z-scores, same thing we'll do equals parenthesis, cell reference the data point minus cell reference the mean, but hit a four because we don't want that number to change when we drag. Close parenthesis divided by your standard deviation that you need to hit a four so you lock it in as well. And then we'll click on that cell, hover over the bottom right hand corner and double click or drag down. And we see most of our data is very close to the mean. Most of our z-scores are between about negative four and positive 0.03. So it's between negative 0.4 and positive 0.03. So those are all very close to the mean. And then we have 65 down here with a giant z-score of 4.3. That is very, very, very extreme. It is a huge outlier compared to the rest of the